thank you to our sponsor, Pinpoint Technologies, your source for direct mail and telemarketing leads. Check them out at www.pinpoint-tech.com. Some people think that California is heavily domestic consumption. In point of fact, there's a very large interest in imported wines in Southern California in particular, but also in the North. And today we find that the next, the millennial generation, you know, those people in their 20s that are the generation behind me, um, are very interested in imported wines. So imported wines are about 60% of consumption for them, whereas it's about 31% of consumption in the total United States. Chilean wines came to the U.S. in the 1980s, and it was basically, the industry was basically offering value for money. And, ba and nice wines, well-made wines. But today, or the whole story, the other half, is that Chile produces top quality premium wines. And I think that is a story that needs to be told and needs to be tasted. What really describes Chile is diversity. So we can produce beautiful Sauvignon Blancs on the coastal valleys, uh, beautiful Chardonnays as well in the cool uh, sort of uh, coast. And then we have beautiful Cabernets, Carmenetes, and Merlots in the inland, more deeper in the valleys with hotter and warmer days. I mean, people refer to Bordeaux for elegance and refer to Napa for power. Mm -hmm. In Chile, I think we try to get the best of both. We have a, a climate and soil that give us possibility to produce wines of great finesse, uh, but also with good fruit and power. So Finca Gisetto is at 3,500 feet, um, so it's, it's pretty high compared to other vineyards. There's one of the vineyards in Argentina is one of the highest in the world, is the highest in the world. Um, but at 3,500 feet you certainly start to feel the, um, the altitude and we get great um, warmth in the daytime, great sunny days, but a drop in temperature at night where you retain some good freshness in the grapes. So it's really the diurnal difference in temperature which makes um, Argentina's climate and Mendoza and Agrello's climate unique. We're really happy about the sort of climate that we've got and we've planted just the grapes that really suit that particular climate. So we have no white varieties, we've just got Malbec, we're really focused on Malbec and Cabernet which grows so very well in Agrello. I'm very busy winemaker. It's true that I decided with my project to to do something quite difficult. It was to do a small project in places that I was excited to go there. It's not all Spain. In fact, I work in seven different areas, more in the north because I, I was really interested in trying to understand the different profiles of the Tempranillo grape in Rioja, Rivera, Toro. Maybe well-known winemakers are very proud to produce those outstanding, uh, very impressive wines, but I think it's, it's as exciting to produce simple, direct, rich, and pure wines. 2007 uh, was a scary and complicated vintage, which ended up by being good, thanks to, I think, the fact that many people in Champagne made the right decision to harvest in September. And we say traditionally that we harvest 95 days after the flowering, which would have meant, in Champagne, harvesting on August 20th which is crazy, as you know, that traditionally we harvest in October, s September, but August is crazy. Everybody got ready to harvest August 20. We entered the vineyard and we said, there is no way we're harvesting this, this is not ripe. So we waited and most people waited and it was the right decision because we had all the end of August, a wonderful sun and all through September, a lot of sun, a lot of northeast wind that dries the grape. And it was really, the, the, this is what saved the harvest. For us, it's extremely important the tradition, but it's extremely important also to keep an eye on new technology. And in fact, we work in a very traditional way in the vineyards, but also in a some quite modern way in terms that we uh, do every summer in a way a sort of green harvest in, in order to reduce the amount of bunches per vine, reducing production in order to achieve the best ripeness during the harvest time. And then we do very sh soft and short maceration compared to tradition. For example, we do normally three, four days for the dolcetto and maximum a week or ten days for the rest of our work by our Barbera, Nebbiolo and Nebbiolo for Barolo. Uh, we always believe that in, uh, in the Duro, there's an incredible terroir to make some of the best uh, dry wines. Um, and our aim is to really show the, uh, the true terroir. Get out, you know, what's the, 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 this incredible soil that we have in, uh, in the Duro and bring it into the bottle. 
all the grapes are part of our estate. We have uh, 145 hectares uh, planted with uh, mostly noble grapes like Turiga Nacional, Turiga Franca, Tinto Cao, Tintaro Rige. Those are enchanting names. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we use those local, pure, indigenous grape varieties uh, to make our dry wines as well. The reason that I selected to build an international portfolio is because I could never dedicate my career to simply one country. You do have importers out there that are Italian specialists or Australian specialists or South American specialists. I couldn't do it because these are all like my children, really.